One of the industry's biggest problems to date is not the recovery from the pandemic, but now it's the difficulties experienced with labour shortages. It is being labelled widely as an ongoing crisis. You see, aviation positions are challenging and require adequate, proper training. Therefore, as you may imagine, this means that someone entering the industry will not be magically trained in, say, a handful of days in the high case sensitive roles. This can be magnified tenfold as well. Emirates is one of the largest airlines in recent times to emerge outright and discuss how the labour shortages are impacting their operations. The airline is expecting quite a great conflict, if you will. It comes as they're seeing a surging demand that, if anything, they're struggling to keep up with and is actually a detriment to the wider company. Aircraft also come into the question of all of this, with deliveries continuing to be impacted, something I will be covering on the channels soon. They're in a position also where, due to staff shortages, aircraft delays, adjustments to existing planes, and much more, they are hopeful that they'll be able to offer a full service, but the likelihood is issues will continue to persist before they are totally out of the woods goods, which has many negative implications on their massive customer base. For an airline like Emirates, you can imagine that the ambition is to fly at a high capacity to help capture the demand that has been built up after so many years are spent away from travelling for many. Emirates therefore comes typically well equipped for such events, with a fleet of over 100 Airbus A380s alongside their significant twin-engined Boeing 777 fleet. However, with staff shortages, the ability to safely operate an entire fleet has become difficult, and it means that some markets have seen adjustments to cope. This was heavily discussed during the 151st IATA Slot Conference in Melbourne, with airlines emphasising how slots have been reworked quite heavily in in recent months and years as well to help better manage the readily available workforce which of course is bleeding. This includes methods to potentially solve some of the issues include large recruitment drives the carriers have been undertaking however it is imperative to consider that the aviation industry as a sector for positions is not what it once was with jobs also being vastly underpaid compared to other areas of the workforce and then being incredibly demanding roles many people are simply not looking at these specific job offers how they maybe once would have. It means for airlines like Emirates looking at these large recruitment drives, while there are people willing to work, it may be harder to find people in some other markets. The perfect example is that of Auckland Airport. When speaking at this very conference, their executive and others working in the New Zealand space said that they find that the labour crisis is unlike any other with the big issue being that of the unemployment rate being so low in New Zealand that there isn't anyone left available to actually hire. For an airline like Emirates and capacity constraints in place, they're looking towards additional partnerships with airlines to be a driving force for the future and maybe alleviate some of the pressure on their network and of course their employees while still being able to welcome in benefits of some extent. Air Canada and their announcement, to form a partnership recently is a significant one for the future to monitor, but the reality is it's not the only partnership we've seen them announce in recent times. It's something that not even at the Dubai-based airline we're seeing happen quite frequently. What are your thoughts of the ongoing shortages at Emirates and of course the difficulties in welcoming in aircraft and how this is generally impacting the wider industry? You can let me know down below in the comments. A massive thanks to all the cabin crew members. Do take care and be safe and I will see you next time.